gives the team six points. We also have a technical fall, which occurs if a wrestler outscores his opponent by 16 or more points. Once the, uh, the difference in the team score or in the uh, match score gets to be 16, the referee will call a halt to the match and award the victory to the, uh, the wrestler with the, with the uh, 16 more points than his opponent. Okay, we're going into the 138 pound match now for Norristown, Scott Higgins, and for Penn Ridge, Matt Ripley. Ripley is not the regular 138 pounder for Penn Ridge. Their regular uh, 138 pounder is Tom Plinsky, who uh, is out with a knee injury at this time. So this, uh, this may be good news for Norristown, depending on how well Scott Higgins can handle Matt Ripley. Looks like we have a, an injury time out here now. Scott Higgins has uh, what appears to be a bloody nose. So we'll have a little break in the action. Getting back to the team scoring, uh, a team can pick up points for a pin, or also called a fall, a technical fall, which is when the opponent wins, the, the wrestler wins by 16 or more points or a disqualification if one wrestler is disqualified the other uh, wrestler is awarded the victory and six team points for his team and uh, also a default if a wrestler is unable to continue after a match begins uh, that would be considered a default and six points would be awarded to the other team uh, also a forfeit awards six points to a team. If one wrestler, if one team has a wrestler in a weight class and and the other team doesn't, that uh, team that has the wrestler at that weight class gets six points for his team. So there are a lot of ways to score points here, and right now we stand at a deadlock, 12 to 12, in the 138-pound weight class with Scott Higgins going back into action here against Matt Ripley of Penn Ridge. <coughs> takedown here with uh, one minute 11 seconds left in the first period. Both wrestlers sort of uh, jockeying for position trying to set up his opponent and both so far without success. Score still 0-0. Zero, zero. Referee stops the match. Looks like we might have more blood here. As I mentioned in one of the earlier matches, uh, an injury timeout due to bleeding uh, is uh, unlimited. Normally, uh, you're allowed one minute for injury time. After that, you have to uh, default your match. Referee with the towel cleaning up a little blood there. Uh, Penridge's coaching staff includes Tom Kohler, head coach, and Ron Gumbarge, assistant. Penridge's uh, record at this point is three wins, 12 losses, and they have a two and seven league record. So uh, with Norristown at one and eight in the league, uh, a victory would uh, move them into a tie for fourth place in the Colonial Division. And uh, that may not sound like much, but uh, with the lean years that Norristown's had uh, in the past few, that, that's a step in the right direction. Penridge is uh, one of the teams from the old 
Bucksmont League that is now defunct. Most of those teams went over to the Suburban One League. Okay, we're back into action here. And uh, it looks like we have a little uh, rejuvenation here from Matt Ripley, who goes right in for a takedown attempt, but uh, was not able to secure the takedown before going out of bounds. Hig Higgins trying to counter Ripley's uh, attacks at his legs. Higgins with those underhooks. He's got more blood on his face. I don't know, the referee may be stopping this match again before we're done. We have uh, about 15 seconds left in this period, the first period. No takedown, in fact, no points have been secured in the, uh, in the entire match, the entire first period. Out of bounds again. Referee checking out Higgins condition here. He allows the uh, action to continue. First period ends, no score. Penridge's Ripley has the choice of positions. Looks like uh, looks like he's choosing the top position. So Higgins will be down for the second period. Score zero zero. Trying to turn in, trying to get a leg. Ripley trying to counter. Both men are standing. It looks like uh, Higgins almost has the escape, but not quite. Ripley was able to just hang on to that leg to maintain control. Wrestlers are back in the center now. We're in the second period. There's no score. Higgins uh, put that leg up and uh, immediately Ripley grabbed it and tried to put in a cradle. It looks like he's working for a cradle here. I don't think he quite has his hands locked. No, he doesn't. In fact, uh, Higgins is coming out the back. He backs out. He stands up. He faces his opponent. It looks like he's going to have a one-point escape here. Yes, he has one point now. So he takes the lead. 1-0 in the second period over Matt Ripley of Penn Ridge. Out of bounds again. Higgins having some difficulty here. He may have bitten his tongue or something like that. He grimaced in pain there as he went off the Went off the mat and uh, he's going over to the side for a little injury time, but uh, I think again we have a case of bleeding because uh, the referee did not signal to the timers bench that injury time should be kept. No injury time is kept at the table during a uh, injury timeout with uh, bleeding. So we have another break in the action here in the second period of this 138-pound match against Scott Higgins of Norristown versus Matt Ripley of Penn Ridge. Looks like the wrestlers are ready to get back into action. Neutral position. Higgins goes right in for a double leg attempt. He's a little bit too low, though. He's got his head down. He's not going to get a takedown from that position unless he gets a little better leverage. Uh, Ripley's trying to put in a cross face now to counter Higgins' uh, double leg. And uh, he's able to counter that. Both wrestlers. Well, Ripley's, uh, Ripley went around, maintained uh, some control, and uh, secured the takedown. So he takes a two to one lead over Higgins now with 20 seconds left in the second period. So, uh, Scott Higgins having his troubles here. He's getting turned over. It looks like uh, Higgins may be uh, drained right now. And time runs out. 
Looks like Higgins was running out of gas there. He was saved by the bell, but uh, Ripley picked up um, three more back points, three more points for a near fall. So he uh, now enjoys a five to one lead over Scott Higgins. Higgins is back over to the side. Um, Higgins is new to the varsity lineup, so uh, he may not be uh, quite as battle ready as some of these other guys. So he's really showing uh, a little drain of energy at this point. And uh, in the later seconds of that second period, Ripley started to uh, dominate quite a bit. But uh, we'll see what the what the third period has in store with uh, Ripley taking the bottom position now. Higgins needs some back points because he's behind five to one. The rest is go out of bounds as Ripley tries to stand up. It definitely looks at this point like uh, Ripley's got uh, more energy than uh, Scott Higgins. So his conditioning is, uh, is starting to come through now for him as uh, Higgins is really sloppy with that uh, cradle attempt and uh, Ripley is able to counter and uh, secure a two-point reversal. It's now seven to one in favor of Ripley. He's putting in the cradle but out of bounds. Higgins goes back into the middle, down position. He's got a minute and 20 sec, a uh, minute and 25 seconds to try to turn things around. But it looks like uh, Ripley is really pouring it on now. He's, uh, it looks like he's in pretty good shape. So, so Higgins, Higgins really has to move. He does. He stands up for a one-point escape. Score is now seven to two. But Higgins is going to need more than just that one point escape. He's got to, he's got to really go for it now if he was, wants to pull this one out. We have a minute left in the third and final period of this 138 pound matchup. Again, the wrestlers go out of bounds. We have 33 seconds left. Coach Horner of Norristown yelling instructions over to his wrestler, Scott Higgins. He goes in for a, uh, looks like a single leg takedown, unsuccessful. He's going for that double leg. He goes in a little bit too low, though, and uh, Ripley is able to counter. Ripley's coming around behind. Higgins is trying to hang on, trying to hang on to that leg. Wrestlers go out of bounds with five seconds left. So it looks like uh, Penn Ridge is going to win another match here. Uh, we have a five point difference in the score. So that would give a three point decision to uh, Penn Ridge. Two seconds left. Match is over. Matt Rid Ripley of Penn Ridge wins seven to two. So the team score will now be 15 to 12 in favor of Penn Ridge. And Penn Ridge draws back into the lead. Coming up for Norristown, however, is uh, another one of their more successful wrestlers, Rob Wenick, who has a 16-6-1 record. He'll be taking on Jay Hunsberger of Penn Ridge. This is the 145-pound weight class. This is the eighth match out of 12. Winning 
trying to shoot under uh, Hunsberger, but uh, Hunsberger sprawls back, reaches back for the leg, and the referee calls a halt to it, the stalemate. He's going to bring the wrestlers back in the center, start them out again. Hunsberger shoots in that, but way too low. But uh, Wenig missed the opportunity there to spin around as Hunsberger backs out. Both wrestlers uh, tie up, trying to set each other up for the takedown. Wenig trying to duck under, then spin around. Looks like he's trying to secure a front headlock. He, he used a cross ankle pick nicely on Hunsberger to secure the two point takedown. So Wenning goes into a 2 0 lead here in the first period of this 145 pound weight class uh, contest. 31 seconds left now in the first period. Wrestlers will start back in the middle. Hunsberger down. Wenig on top. Wenig breaks Hunsberger right down to the mat. That's where you want your opponent to be. Down flat. That's where you work to get your pinning combination. Wenig trying to work that bar arm. But Hunsberger comes back and gets the leg. Wenig got a little sloppy there. He got a little too high up towards Hunsberger's head. His arm slipped out. Hunsberger was able to get a piece of Wenig's leg. But uh, time runs out in the first period, and uh, the score remains 2-0 in favor of Rob Wenig. Wenig, uh, along with Kyle Rigg, is uh, one of the uh, hopefuls for Norristown in next week's sectional tournament. Rigg and Wenig uh, both will probably get uh, pretty high seedings for that tournament. A win here would, uh, would, would help Wenig. Hunsberger is cautioned now for an illegal starting position. So he was given a caution there. One more violation will cost him a point. Okay, action starts in the second period with Wenig on top. Rob Wenig of Norristown trying to work for a pinning combination on Jay Hunsberger of Penn Ridge. He's trying to get that cradle now. He's got the head. He's got, well, he lost, he lost the leg. And the Hunsberger backs out for a one-point escape. So the score is now two to two. Okay. Wenning muscles around. He's got another takedown. He now leads four to two. We've got a minute left in the second period. Wrestlers go out of bounds with uh, Rob Wenig of Norristown enjoying a 4-2 lead. The team scoring right now is 15-12 in favor of Penn Ridge. So a victory here could uh, put Norristown poised to, to take the lead. Rob Wenig looks like he wants to try to go in with a, a leg combination, but not, there he goes. He's got the leg leg move in there. He's got a cross body ride on Jay Hunsberger. He's got a grapevine with the leg, and that looks like he's trying to work a He's trying to work a, uh, a guillotine, but uh, he doesn't really have the, the position at this point. 
to bring him back because Hunsberger fell over onto his left side now. So it's going to be tough for Wenning to bring him back. And the referee calls a stalemate. Unless a, a wrestler is able to manipulate in a certain position, uh, the referee is going to call, call the match uh, back to the center and uh, have him start over again. So the score is still 4-2, 11 seconds left in the second period. Wenig breaks Hunsberger right down. Closing seconds of the second period. And after two periods of this 145 pound matchup, Rob Wenig has four, Jay Hunsberger two. In the third period, Wenig will be in the bottom position and Hunsberger on top. So Wenig's gonna be trying to secure a two-point reversal. He stands up. Hunsberger uh, tried to put a little leg combination in of his, on his own, but the, the referee stopped that because it was potential, potentially dangerous as Wenig stood up. Again, Hunsberger puts in a leg combination. He's trying to put in a guillotine of his own here now. He's reaching over for Wenig's arm. He's got it. Uh, if he can pull him over, pull him back and over, he could put Wenig on his back. But it looks like uh, Wenig's not going to let that happen. Rob Wenig being a, a strong kid, it's pretty tough to muscle him over. Rob Wenig is... Uh, for those of you who may be familiar with Norristown football, is the uh, place kicker on Norristown's football team. Well, it looks like we may be getting to another one of those stalemate situations with neither wrestler trying to maintain any kind of advantage. Wenig now gets in between the legs. He stands up. If he can turn in, and take Hunsberger over, he can get a two-point reversal. He's getting close. And he's got it. He's got a two-point reversal. Now he leaves the match six to two. We have 25 seconds left in this final period. Hunsberger now with an escape, one point. It's six to three, and he's trying to go for more. He's going for a takedown. If Wenig uh, lets go of that leg, Hunsberger may get a takedown. But time runs out in the third period. Wenig wins the match six to three, and that's going to tie this contest up with uh, 15 apiece between Penn Ridge and Norristown. So with eight matches down and four to go, we're at a deadlock again. So this is a, uh, this is quite a battle here in Norristown High Gymnasium for two teams that, uh, well, you might say are also Rams, but uh, they're, they're not giving up. They, they want a piece of the action. They're, they're fighting for fourth place in the Colonial Division. And uh, I think they're, uh, both teams are wrestling hard. Okay, 155 pound matches underway with Jim Roudenbush of Norristown getting taken down by Mike Rahorski of Penn Ridge. But Roudenbush reverses. He's got uh, Rahorski in trouble now. He's got him on his back. Referee trying to get position there to Award back points for Roudenbush. Right now, the, uh, the score is at 2-2, but uh, Roudenbush is going to pick up some more points. He's still got a pinning combination on Rahorski. He's got him on his back again. Here in this 155 pound contest between Jim Roudenbush of Norristown, Mike Rahorski 
of Penn Ridge. Rahorski went right in for the takedown, but uh, a few seconds later, Radenbush reversed, put Rahorski right on his back, and uh, he's going to be awarded some back points. He's got three back points, but uh, Rahorski comes right back with a reversal. So this is uh, this is good action here. The score now stands at five to four in favor of Radenbush of Norristown, and uh, Coach Horner wants a. Uh, Wants a little clarification here from the referee on the scoring. Well, he, apparently he was satisfied because uh, the score remains 5-4 in favor of Rowdenbush of Norristown. 22 seconds left in the first period. Rowdenbush on the bottom now. He's trying to stand up. Rihorski looks like he's trying to put in a cradle. He's got the cradle. If he can turn him over, he'll be looking for some back points. Roudenbush is going to try to outlast the clock here. We have two seconds, one, and time runs out in the first period. Boy, it seems like uh, that was a home match in itself. <laughs> Score is five to four in favor of Jim Roudenbush from Norristown. And boy, if these guys aren't tired, <laughs> I don't know. But they've got four minutes to go. They've got four minutes of wrestling to go because we're only at the beginning of the second period. And uh, let's see if we have as much action uh, in the second period here as we did in the first. Roudenbush again goes for that stand up. And if Rihorski, oh, he couldn't get his cradle on this time. And Roudenbush just turned in and got a one point escape. So he leads now six to four. Rihorski. He's got the leg in the head. He's got his cradle now. He's going for his takedown. Looks like he's got it. Referee awards the points. That ties it up at 6-6, but uh, Roudenbush may be in trouble here. He's on his back. Referee's counting out some points right now, and there's the pin. So Rihorski's stuck at the Jim Roudenbush in the early goings here, the second period. After a wild and woolly first period, uh, Mike Rihorski of Penn Ridge said enough of this nonsense. He put on the clamps and uh, six points for Penn Ridge as Jim Radenbush walks off the mat.